All right, so uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Alex Manini. I'm at Mount Sinai. My story is uh, through emergency medicine up at Boston. I did a tox fellowship at NYU Bellevue, and then I got really turned on by research and landed at Mount Sinai, which is where I am now. Um, and I have the unfortunate task of following Jeff Klein, so, um, uh, but I did also do PK, PD training as well in my talk fellowship at NYU Bellevue, so I have something in common with everybody here. Um, I could have spoken about all three phases. So we talk about the individual training grants through NIH, with the K, which are the K awards, the institutional NIH funded training uh, grants, of which there are K-12s, which Jeff spoke about, and T-32. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the T-32s, which I think <laughs> is kind of the new hope for the future, because unfortunately we're hearing from NIH personnel that um, the K-12s are probably going away um, and that we're going to uh, be forced to work through this T-32 model, which has been successful in other arenas, like we heard um, Jane Scott talk about with cardiology. So um, my uh, track was through initially uh, when I got my first job out of fellowship, the first day of work I handed in my K-23 award to uh, Lynn Richardson, who's uh, the director of, has been a director of a K-12 award. Uh, institutional K-12 and an institutional T-32 at Mount Sinai. Um, that fortunately was funded and uh, so that was my K-23. That was my uh, individual K award um, that lasted five years. It protected me for 75 percent of my time. So that was a huge help to get my fledgling research career started. And then subsequently I made a K to R transition with an R01 through uh, the National Institute on Drug Abuse because I'm a toxicologist, right? Um, and that's where I am now. So. Um, fast forward to the present time, we have um, a T32 program at Mount Sinai. I'm the APD of that fellowship, um, and I think of it very much like a research fellowship for uh, prospective emergency physicians who are interested in uh, doing research in emergency care. Um, and I'm also a, a mentor for uh, several smaller grants, an EMF grant, um, and our Empire Clinical Research Program. So that's my story. Uh, but wh what's interesting for you guys is what can you expect from a T32 training program? And so these are kind of the, the high points, and this is kind of cutting to the chase a little bit. Um, what can you expect out of a T32 program? Well, um, you're going to be able to collaborate with researchers who have a track record mm -hmm. of funding. And so if, you, if there's an institution that has a T32 funded, that means they have several different faculty at that institution who have a great track record, who have been funded on several grants, and who are going to be able to mentor you up in terms of grantsmanship, uh, research questions, uh, tying you into other researchers at the institution and outside of the institution as well. Um, the program is also going to provide mentorship, obviously, in terms of milestones. So when you get into the program, what should you be thinking about in your first year? What should you be thinking about your second year? What kind of degree should you be tailoring yourself towards? Um, if it's a good T32 program, it should be talking about multidisciplinary research. So for example, when I first got in, uh, got my K award and I was interested in drug overdose patients and risk stratifying them with the clinical decision rule, um, I thought, well, maybe I could talk to the neuroscientists and the psychiatrists. And sure enough, when I got plugged in with those folks, they opened my eyes to a whole other, whole other areas of research that I hadn't thought of initially. And so I'm going down at, you know, three years in, I'm going down four or five different li parallel lines of research. So that's really important. Uh, research is really a, uh, it's a team sport. Um, the program should also talk to you about leadership. So you're, if you're a researcher in EM, as Dr. Klein mentioned, you're kind of an endangered species. There's, there's very few of us who want to do research, and so you immediately become a leader. And, you know, so the stories of um, EM trained people who want to do research, they get their NIH funding, and then immediately they become chairs somewhere. And that actually happens. That happened this week. Um, a T32 program also will train you in a formal way. So the formal sort of didactics usually comes by way of a few extra letters after your name. So whether you want to get a master's or even a PhD, um, it will uh, provide you with uh, the compulsory training in uh, clinical investigation. And again, it doesn't have to be clinical investigation. It can be basic science as well. And, but probably most importantly, it gives you salary support, right? So it buys down your time. Um, through the department so that you can set aside your clinical responsibilities and actually um, get to the nitty-gritty of doing research. So when those of us who are writing these grants were planning the, uh, the training program, 
we talk about what's the experience of the prospective applicants. Are they going to have research projects that are going to go across discipline, uh, disciplines? Is it going to be active? Are they going to have access to NIH-funded faculty? These are all things that are kind of pre-programmed in, which is great. So if you're applying for a T32 program and you, and you actually uh, become a T32 fellow, this has all kind of been worked out before you got there. So it's actually great. It's almost like a turnkey research fellowship as opposed to what we heard about um, initially individual K awards where you kind of have to do it all yourself. This is not a do it all yourself. This is a you show up and voila. So it's really great. Um, some programs partner with CTSI, CTSA programs, um, institutional um, uh, cross-platform research um, partnerships um, through multiple departments. Um, and so the best T32 programs have access to CTSAs as well, which provide support with grant writing and um, research assistance, um, administration, and things of that nature. Um, and then the key piece for emergency medicine is that we have this limited pool of qualified applicants. So if you're in this room and you're a prospective applicant, or if you're a faculty member and you're thinking about writing a T32 grant, um, you have to think about these concepts of, you know, who are you writing this for? Who are your applicants, right? So what about sort of the nuts and bolts of the program? Um, there is a group, core group, so there's an administrative group, and at our shop we have, you know, grant writers, we have a core group of faculty who are all NIH funded. Um, we have proposed, tra proposed training programs to get your degree, um, and then we set up uh, points along, uh, along the way so that we can evaluate the T32 scholars, right? So um, we have set up meetings with your mentors. We have an administrative mentor and a research uh, content mentor with expertise in whatever area of research that the fellow wants to um, pursue. But then we also have um, set points throughout the year where you get evaluated, you get feedback, and you can sit down one-on-one -on -one with your mentor and, and find out, you know, what am I doing well, what do I need to improve on, and what are my milestones that I need to achieve before I graduate. And then also important is the institutional commitment. So if you're going to a T32 program or if you're writing a T32 program, you need buy-in obviously from your department, from your department chair, but also from your institution in general. So the dean um, needs buy-in and commitment. And you can be rest assured that if you're applying to one of these programs and they have this in place, that they're fully committed to your development as a researcher. So we talked a little bit about um, time commitment. The program director of the T32 has time also set aside, just like the scholars. So it takes a certain amount of time for a T32 program director to actually facilitate all this stuff, to meet with all the scholars, to facilitate the mentorship, um, and to commit time to that. So that's generally set aside. There's also a structure of leadership. So um, at our T32, we have a director, we have two APDs, Myself and Jason Shapiro, who's also NIH funded, he's uh, got ARC funding, he has multiple R01s as well. And then we have an advisory committee. So each scholar has a group of usually between two and five advisory panel members who will meet with the T32 scholar, talk about research, whether it's their expertise um, that they're adding to that or whether it's just talking about, you know, milestones and, and which grant they need to be writing or what project they need to be um, working on. And then I talked about administration as well. The faculty um, are very accommodative to the trainees in terms of putting their time aside because the T32 has actually bought down some of their time as well. So that's built into the program as well. Um, so that's the great thing about one of these programs. Um, the faculty can be senior faculty. So I talk a lot about sort of the higher level leadership members of the, of the advisory panel, but also there are junior faculty as well. And it helps if you're going to a place with a T32 or a K-12 to look at the junior faculty who are there. What's their trajectory? Are they being successful? Um, are they being promoted? You can ask um, when you get there and find out, you know, how the department overall is doing. Um, Question? If you're an institution looking at T32, is there kind of a, a number of funded researchers you would say is the bare minimum to even think about considering one of these programs? I'm sorry. One more time. Is there a number of funded researchers at an institution that you consider to be the bare minimum to even think about having enough talent to have a T32 mentorship program? Um, I don't, I mean, I'll let Jane 
answer that one? It depends on what the program scope is. Mm -hmm. So if sometimes they're very focused and the six or eight mentors that are R01 funded are fine. Mm -hmm. um, other programs are going uh, sort of uh, huge areas and they'll put in 30 or 40. So we see all different types of programs. Um, we, see, we have some huge programs that span 15 departments and that sort of stuff. But if you stay focused and stay small, um, you need fewer faculty. I'm just wondering, because in EM, I mean, how many institutions in Mercer have more than one R1 funded investigator? Okay, but when we started the K-12 program, it was written in that everybody had to have a co-principal investigator that was somebody who was already NIH T32 funded. So that the K-12, they were, they were PIs, they were the, you know, Dr. Lustoro had an R01, but he didn't have that experience with T32s. So he partnered with somebody at his institution so that there was a duality in the leadership. And in addition, by doing that, um, it was cardiology, they were able to pull in cardiology R01 investigators to provide mentorship. So quite frankly, these, it, they ended up being wonderful multidisciplinary teams because people brought in other departments and CTSA. Alan? I'd like to add to that, uh, my application for Vanderbilt, 95 plus percent of the mentors listed were non em They were cardiologists, they were intensivists, they were all R1 funded. So, and, 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 and most of the time, the primary mentor is going to be outside the department. University of Medicine, I'd say every one of our scholars, primary mentor is not in and that's okay. And I think that that's, you know, to be expected. So that's probably the, you know, the right answer is you shouldn't really just look at the Department of Emergency Medicine if you're looking at a place for your research training. Um, because probably at least half of your mentors are going to be outside of emergency medicine. I know they, they were for me. Um, and that's, um, that's a way that you can foster your multidisciplinary research project as well.